Hello everyone! In the last video we walked through the phylogeny of dinosaur ancestors and the earliest dinosaurs. In this and the later videos of this series we will be looking at specific lineages of dinosaurs, starting with the sauropodomorphs, from the small to the gigantic titans of the ancient world. So let's jump right in. Among the layman, transitional forms are often conceived as direct blends between modern species, a misconception that is frequently exploited by creationists to parody evolutionary theory. However, such chimeras are not a prediction of evolution and would actually count as evidence against it. As Darwin explained in his book On the Origin of Species, quote, I have found it difficult when looking at any two species to avoid picturing to myself forms directly intermediate between them, but this is a wholly false view. We should always look for forms intermediate between each species and a common but unknown progenitor, and the progenitor will generally have differed in some respects from all its modified descendants, close quote. Thus, transitional species of two sister clades should exhibit intermediate characteristics between the common ancestral group and their respective derived groups, and the transitional species of each respective clade should become more similar when you get closer to the common ancestor, because at that point they were very closely related. For example, if we trace the lineages of elephants and manatees backwards, we come to creatures like Merotherium and Prorostomus, respectively. In the previous video we saw the same thing with the Triassic relatives of theropods, ornithischians, and sauropodomorphs, who all look very similar to each other. We will continue further on in time with the clade of sauropodomorphs, highlighting some species along the way. Sauropodomorpha is one lineage of dinosaurs containing those famous long-necked quadrupedal forms called the sauropods. However, these aren't the only members of sauropodomorpha. The prosauropods, or presauropods, are another paraphyletic clade of sauropodomorphs whom we mentioned in Dinosaur Ancestors. Now just what morphological features unite the prosauropods and sauropods? Well they both have peg-like teeth with spatulate or lanceolate crowns, enlarged nares, 10 plus cervical vertebrae, 3 plus sacral vertebrae, a tibia longer than the femur, an ascending process of astragalus that fits into the slot formed by the descending process of the tibia, as well as a number of other features. Despite these synapomorphies, the earliest sauropodomorphs looked vastly different from the famous Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus. For instance, both Panphagia and Saturnalia are bipedal and smaller than a human. Pantedraco, another biped, comes in at almost 10 feet and appears to be omnivorous, which might seem a bit strange considering how the sauropodomorphs are well known for their herbivory. And stranger still, Buriolestes is a carnivore. It's the most basal sauropodomorph known so far. The first specimens were discovered in 2016, and recently in 2018, more complete specimens were described, which affirm this position. And it suggests that the ancestors of all sauropodomorphs were originally carnivorous. Ephrasia is evidently herbivorous, no surprise there, and seems to be facultatively quadrupedal, meaning that it could walk bipedally or quadrupedally depending on the situation. The same is true of the popularly known Platyosaurus, as well as other lesser known sauropodomorph genera including Cerasaurus, Lufengosaurus, and Massospondylus. One genus very close to the origin of sauropodiformes is Cetod, who was buried by a falling sand dune. Clearly this is one of those fossils not laid down in water. Even after crossing into sauropodiformes, a number of basal members of this group were facultatively quadrupedal, such as Ardonyx. The members of Sauropoda, though, are fully quadrupedal, and some sauropodomorphs, like the large Melanerosaurus, are so sauropod-like that they have flip-flopped between being outside or inside the clade. Once we do relatively assuredly cross into Sauropoda, we find the first of these in the early Jurassic, such as Antitonitris, which is a discovery that was predicted under evolution years before. Less predictably, though, the family Antitonitris is in Lessimsoridae, has recently turned up the remarkably massive Ledu Mahadi from South Africa and Ingentia from Argentina. Both of these finds pushed back the acquisition of gigantism in sauropods to the late Triassic. Beyond that is the Eusauropoda, the true sauropods. 
One of the most basal used sauropods is the bizarre Shonosaurus from early Jurassic China. What makes this sauropod so strange is its tail club, a feature that we normally associate with the Ornithischian ankylosaurs. It, however, was not alone in this feature. Spinophorosaurus from Middle Jurassic Niger similarly has spiked osteoderms on its tail. The likely explanation for these tails is that they provide a defense against predators, giving a hint as to how dangerous the predatory dinosaurs have become at this point. In the case of Shonosaurus, the Titanurin theropod Gassosaurus was a common predator. A bit more derived than these guys is a clade called Momenchisauridae, all from China, who are well known for their extremely elongate necks. Previously, it was hypothesized that geographic isolationism was the reason Momenchisaurids were found nowhere else in the world, being separated from the rest of Asia by a sea. However, in 2018, researchers discovered a diplodocoid called Lingwulong that has cast doubt on this hypothesis. This discovery means that the Momenchisaurids weren't totally isolated, that diplodocoids dispersed into East Asia earlier than previously suspected, and that the major clades of sauropods diverged about 15 million years earlier than previously thought. This has indicated that the later major clades of sauropods, Diplodocoidea and Macronaria, collectively called Neosauropoda, split from their common ancestor over 183 million years ago. Within Diplodocoidea are the clades Rabachisauridae, Dicreosauridae, and Diplodocidae. The Rabachisaurids are all known from the early to late Cretaceous and contain some really odd members like the broad muzzled Nigersaurus. It had a dental battery that allows for high tooth replacement. Based on how the skull was positioned in relation to the neck, it likely browsed low on the ground. Next, Dicreosauridae is unique in that all its members have short necks. Well, at least for sauropods. Among them, M. Argosaurus even had spines running along its neck. And Diplodocidae is probably the most famous of the Neosauropoda since it contains Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, Diplodocus, and Supersaurus, which had long whip-like tails. There is a debate on how these whip tails were used. Some researchers have gone so far as to suggest that the tip of the tail could break the sound barrier, causing a powerful crack sound that would certainly deter any predator. On the other side of the divide is Macronaria, named for their huge nasal openings, which is home to the famous Brachiosaurus, as well as the Titanosaurs. Titanosauria existed throughout the Cretaceous, although their biodiversity is predicted to have begun in the Jurassic. This clade contains some famous members who hail from South America, including Argentinosaurus and Saltosaurus, the latter of whom possessed osteoderms. Although these features are often assumed to function as armor, they were too small and too few to serve for that purpose. In 2011, Rogers et al. proposed the titanosaurs use these osteoderms to store minerals. This clade even hosts the most massive terrestrial vertebrate ever discovered, Dreadnoughtus. It makes sense that South America would have so many large herbivores since it also had large theropods like Carcharodontosaurids and Abelisaurids. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Magyarosaurus was subjected to insular dwarfism on Hateg Island in what is now Romania. Despite their diversity, most titanosaurs began to slowly dwindle into extinction within the late Cretaceous. A few species managed to persist until the KPG extinction event. So that wraps up sauropodomorph phylogeny. The earliest sauropodomorphs appeared in the late Triassic, underwent diversification in the early Jurassic, and lasted all the way into the Cretaceous period. They grew from small herbivores into the largest terrestrial vertebrates Earth has ever produced. And in the next video of this series, we will be looking at the clade of bird-hipped dinosaurs called the Ornithischians. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.